Good evening, Facebook. This is Dr. Sharita Weatherspoon, and I am back again this evening uh, with another one of our phenomenal powerhouse women authors who she is contributing to the love letters to my girls, 100 Black Women Speak to the Hearts of Black Women and Girls Anthology, Mrs. Kamala Smith. I'm so excited to have her here with us this evening. Um, and we are going to dive into our conversation in just a minute. I just want to remind you all, in case you haven't heard about this project, <laughs> what mm -hmm. it's all about, uh, we are bringing together um, now over 100 women who are going to write love letters to other Black women and girls to uplift, inspire, motivate, and empower them, to help them on their journey, to remind them of how beautiful um, powerful, unique, and brilliant, and wonderful, and valuable they are in this earth, despite what the world would have us to think. Mm -hmm. And we just, you know, are coming together to reignite sisterhood, um, to share love and show love to other Black women and girls around the world. Um, you can find out more about this project by visiting loveletterstomygirls.com. Join our uh, newsletter list so we can keep you up to date with the progress on the project and we can share opportunities for you to support this project. It really is more than the book. The book is going to be phenomenal, but it's more than the book. We want to donate copies of the book to organizations that serve Black women and girls around the world. Um, so donating means, you know, it's free to them, but somebody's got to pay for it. So we're going to be looking for your support and making that happen. We're also going to be funding at least two scholarships for um, Black women, one for women under 21 and one for women over 21. And they'll be able to use those scholarship funds for education, training, or business startup. And we've got a couple other things that we're working on as well. So this is really a movement. And we want um, as many of you, male, female, Black, white, or other to support us in any way that you possibly can and just showing Black women and girls that we are in fact appreciated and recognizing and acknowledging um, our contributions to the world. So we are ready to dive into this conversation with Kamala. Um, I do know Kamala personally. Mm -hmm. um, we attend the same church. Uh, so I know what she's about. I'm expecting um, for some more jewels to drop this evening <laughs> for y'all to pick up some good things for yourselves. Um, so I want you to listen in closely if you're already tuned in. Um, share this with your your the folks on your timeline. Start a watch party. Make sure you like and do the thumbs up so Facebook gives us some love with their algorithm. Um, and if you're watching the replay, you do the same thing as well. Comment, ask questions. We'll be sure to acknowledge those. But listen in and listen to what you can pull from this conversation. So, Kamala. Yes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here this evening. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Absolutely. So um, the first question is always to tell us, you know, who you are, what you do, and what you're about. So who is Kamala Smith? So who I am, I am the wife of Mark Smith. I've been married to the love of my life for over 14 years now, and I am the mother of a fearfully and wonderfully made blended family. I'm a daughter, I am a sister, I am a friend, I am so many of those things. Um, mm -hmm. But what I do is I recently had a career change after working for 16 years in mental health. I just recently did a career change, so that was an out of my comfort zone uh, move. Yeah. And I now work in workforce development mm -hmm. for teenagers. So I am creating atmospheres so teenagers can cultivate a career experience. And it's been phenomenal, pretty phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure that your training though is coming in handy, right? <laughs> absolutely. It absolutely is. Because <laughs> mental health peeks through. <laughs> In everything. A lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So 
You described your family as a fearfully and wonderfully made blended family. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know I know a bit about your story, um, and I know other people who are in blended families. I don't typically hear people describe their family that way, and not that they're always negatively, you know, describing it. But that's a really powerful statement. Yeah. So, talk to me a little bit more about where that comes from because I it probably didn't start off that way day one right yeah. <laughs> so how'd you get there how'd you get there um much prayer much acknowledging some shame much acknowledgement of some mm -hmm. guilt um mm -hmm. Much, much acknowledgement of just who we are as people and that we do things that take us on detours, but mm -hmm. the detour still takes us to where we need to be in life. Mm -hmm. um, even when we go on detours on the road, it still takes us to our destination. So my family, um, it, it, took us, it took us some time to get here. Mm -hmm. We're here and I, we tell our children all the time, we may not be the typical family, but we're our family mm -hmm. and we will, we will live as such and we will love out loud um, as the family that we are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it feels good to be here. Uh -huh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that statement that detours still take you to your destination. That is really, really good. So for those of you who are tuning in, that's your first jewel right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that no matter where that path is taking you, um into dark corners and yep. dark places and under the bridge <laughs> versus yep. over the bridge that it's still going to take you where you're supposed to be into your ultimate destination but it may not always be roses and flowers right. you right. know you have to go through mud <laughs> yeah sometimes you got to go through mud and it just yeah. makes me think about the lotus flower that still comes through the mud mm -hmm. so there's still some some beauty in mm -hmm. the mud so got to go yeah. through it and trust the process and, and, and you'll make it to the other side. That's how to trust the process, trust the process and go through the process, through the process. not trying to detour the detour. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you try to get back to the main road. The main <laughs> road is like, no, close. No. <laughs> I go back that way. <laughs> and it might take a little longer. You might run into some traffic, but it's going to take you back to the main mm -hmm. road, right mm -hmm. where you need to yep. be to right. get where you're going. That is right. so good. And the weather is not always sunshiny. Mm -hmm. It's not always sunny in Philadelphia. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, what? tell us what your letter is going to be about. My letter, man, my letter is about being you. Mm. Just being your authentic self. Mm -hmm. um, speaking to the young ladies and speaking to the girls because I, I mean I'm sure I can attest in a, in a lot of other women whether brown or peach whatever color you are you can attest that there have been times in your life where you weren't yourself you mm -hmm. weren't your authentic self um, and that didn't quite get you anywhere mm -hmm. when you weren't your authentic self like for a moment it worked Right. But after a while, when you're not your authentic self, you become a character. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, sometimes that character's life, it, it, it's kaput. Like, right. you know, <laughs> it doesn't last. It's not a long lasting character. So mm -hmm. just being true to who you are mm -hmm. and being yourself, being your authentic self and realizing or getting to know who that authentic person is mm -hmm. that's a process right you know getting familiar with who you are and that means that you have to spend some time with yourself and mm -hmm. you alone. have to acknowledge yes alone <laughs> um, and sometimes people get alone and lonely mixed up and they're right. they're not the same things and you have to be alone you have to be alone within yourself and mm -hmm. you have to take criticism and it has that sometimes criticism can be constructive so when people are telling you like, you know, that that's a little flaw you got there. <laughs> you, you, you can't rebuttal that all the time. You have to sometimes process it and think about it and say, well, how are people experiencing me? Mm -hmm. um, 
But being true, mm -hmm. being authentic. And I want, mm -hmm. I want girls to get a hold of that early. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us still don't have a hold of it. Right. And we need to get a hold of that early mm -hmm. because we got a lot to give the world. You know, absolutely. As women, absolutely. we have a lot to give the world, and when we're we're trying to be somebody else, then we're not giving what we're supposed to be giving to the world. Mm. Yeah. So this is I don't know if you saw the interview from earlier today, but this is kind of picking up where that conversation left off and talking about you know authenticity and you know acknowledging who you really are and being mm. okay mm. with who you really are. Um, so. When we talk about, you mentioned um, when you wear the, this mask and you're kind of yep. playing this character's role, like it works for you sometimes. And sometimes it works really well that you then find yourself in this position where you're living this life. Of a chameleon. That, <laughs> of a chameleon. Of a chameleon. And then everybody else is looking at your life like, and it looks great. It looks great. And by all accounts, it should be great. And you're just like miserable, unhappy, unfulfilled because none of the stuff that you've done or accumulated meant anything to you, to you, to the authentic yeah. you. It was stuff that you thought you should be doing, that you had to do, things that other people put pressure on you to do. You, you know, really being who other people wanted you to be or who you thought they wanted you to be versus just being you. So now you've got this life mm -hmm. that is not so great right. because it's not the life you actually wanted. Right. And, you're on, <laughs> and at that point, you're on this unwarranted detour. Like it's right. not a detour that you, it's a detour that you could have avoided. Right, um, exactly. But, but you're on this road and then you're wondering why you're lost mm -hmm. now. Because you're on you're on the detour that wasn't that, that you just shouldn't be Part on. Of the plan. The road was straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then getting back to the main road from there is oftentimes more difficult. Hard. Because you're not even really clear what the main road is mm -hmm. because you never knew yourself. Mm -hmm. You you don't really know what you want. Yeah. You don't really know who you are. Right. And that leads to a heavy heart, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Your heart gets heavy as that. And even just talking about it, that there are people and women that are battling that mm -hmm. um, because they don't think their authentic self is good enough. Right. Um, but I guess, you know, we're here to tell you that it is. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it is good enough. Absolutely. It is good enough. Yes. And even to share the message that, if, if you're not where you, where you want to be right now, that you can work on that. Right. You, you can work on that mm -hmm. and you can build up that character. Right. And if you see people that you admire, you can pull from their characteristics, but you just can't be their character. Exactly. You, you can pull the characteristics from them. Like, Hey, I really like that. Right. You know? I think that that is, that's a genuine thing that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you know, try to put yourself in a posture to, to change some things. Yes. If you don't like those things. Yes, yes. That's so good. Now, of course, you know, your background is helping to inform all of this. Um, but I know that you've probably gone through your own, you know, development, <laughs> your own detours in life and that have helped you, you know, to gain this wisdom that you can now share with other women, which is, you know, ultimately what the book is about. And, you know, we, we've been through what we've been through. Mm -hmm. uh, while we may have some very similar experiences, there are definitely different experiences and differences in the similarity of our experiences. So, you know, you have the ability, all of the women who are participating in the project have the ability to speak from the experience that they've had, um, you know, from their journeys to help another woman to either, as you say, find their way back to the main road, right? Um, maybe more quickly or easily than we did because there was no one there who was guiding us. Um, and maybe to even avoid some of the detours, you know, if, 
if we can be open to hearing the message, right? <laughs> so because, you know, we, yeah. you can, yeah, you can see the directional signs say, yeah, go this mm -hmm. way, but oh, I'm not going that way. I'm going to go through it this way. Mm -hmm. And now you're like stuck in it. And stubborn. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> when you could have just took an extra, you know, few yeah. minutes, you know, get, get it together, get around or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I love the fact that, um, you know, that as, as an author in the project that, you know, you're willing to, to open up, you know, even in this interview and, you know, share, um, about your own experiences, your own detours, but more importantly, where you are now, you know, where you've gotten to and what you've gotten through to be living this life where, you know, you describe yourself as an, an unapologetically unashamed woman. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> With the t-shirt. <laughs> and... I, that that message, that phrase in and of itself is just so powerful because women feel shame oftentimes for things that we have no reason to be ashamed mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but because of society, mm -hmm. um, what we've been trained and taught, we feel shame, we hold it in, it, it, it impacts confidence and Yep. self-esteem which yep. ends up impacting our relationships um with with other women and then you know people in general um so this whole idea or, or idea or concept of being unapologetically unashamed i think might be somewhat new to people and while we may understand the definition mm -hmm. of those words we don't really understand the concept in its fullness. So talk to us about what it means to be unapologetically unashamed. Yeah. So the concept of being unapologetically unashamed is just a state of being free from condemnation, mm -hmm. just free from it. And um, just not being afraid of your truth. Your truth is your truth. And what I tell people often, I'm gonna love you even through your truth. Like mm -hmm. I love you anyway. Um, but for women to acknowledge that there is a truth behind their story and mm -hmm. to not be ashamed of that because the next sister has a story too. Right. The next brother has a story too. Mm -hmm. And we can't hold ourselves in that box of our story because then we can't get to the next story. Right. So if we keep trying to, if we keep holding ourselves in condemnation or um, just, bottling ourselves up in this shame then we're not going to see what's out there that's best for us we're not mm -hmm. we're not going to feel it we're not going to experience it because we're stuck and we got to mm -hmm. get unstuck um, right so speak your truth it mm -hmm. might help the next sister when you speak your truth right. you know right. somebody else might be on a road that they can't get off of because of shame so share your story mm -hmm. and i i commit to sharing my story um, when I was in mental health, I committed to stomping out stigma for mental health, right? That was my goal. That's what I wanted to do. But okay. as I came out of mental health, now I'm focused on mental wellness, right? Mm -hmm. So I want people to, I'm trying to stomp out shame now. Mm -hmm. Sis, let's get past the shame and let's acknowledge that maybe we did do some things that weren't good. Maybe right. we did do some things that was assassination of our character. Maybe we did. But at some point, when do you stop giving a care about that? When do you stop um, living in that past hurt mm -hmm. or right. past life's hurt and move on so you can experience life the way that you're supposed to experience mm -hmm. it? You know, like yeah. just don't keep putting yourself in a bondage or locking right. yourself up in the shame cage. Yeah. You know, it's time to come out of it. And I know there are plenty of women there that are ashamed of things that they have done, mm -hmm. things that they have said. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is that mercy is new every day. Right. <laughs> it's new yes. every morning. Yes. Um, so if the mercy is new every morning, why do we keep shaming ourselves every day? Right. Right. We've been forgiven. So the, the point is that now we have to forgive ourselves. 
Mm -hmm. And that's where the unapologetically unashamed piece comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a story, but I'm not apologizing for my story anymore. Right. <laughs> I'm right. not, you know, and how you view my story, that's your business. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. not my business. <laughs> how right. you feel about me, not my business. Right. You right. Know? So being unapologetically unashamed, unashamed is a sense of freedom mm -hmm. and is simply saying, I don't give a care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of things there. So you talked about, um, you know, kind of not letting that story of what has happened hold you in bondage. But the other piece to that is not reliving the story. Like you experience what you experience. You don't have to keep experiencing it. You don't have to keep right. doing the same behaviors. Right that caused you the shame in the first place. So, you know, whoever you were in that moment does not have to be who you are moving forward. Right. And I think that's a place where we miss it too, right. that it's kind of like, um, you know, okay, well, I, I was a, this is an example. Okay. <laughs> I was a promiscuous teen. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to be a promiscuous adult. You don't have to be. No, you, don't. <laughs> you don't have to be. Right. <laughs> or people right. are going to look at me as a promiscuous teen. Right. Since right. you're not even a teenager no more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So like mm -hmm. you don't you don't you don't have to be who you were. <laughs> and really you know what's so, what's so, what the beauty of that is too well not the beauty but something interesting about that is there's a fine line between the shame and the mask mm. right so you got this the shame that you're carrying so now you can't be your authentic self and you put on this mask mm -hmm. and you're still not being your authentic self right you know so you got to find that you got to find that balance between those two things. Mm -hmm. So if you're in shame, you can't walk around with this mask on your face trying to be something other than that. Acknowledge right. your shame. Acknowledge your hurt. Acknowledge right. it. Speak, speak about it. You right. know, find somebody that is going to be that safe place for you mm -hmm. to talk about that mm -hmm. so that you can be yourself, even if you can be yourself with one person at a time. Right. You know, be right. yourself with that one person at a time until you can get to that point. Yeah. To Finding that you. safe space is really important. Um, and I think that we feel like we can't be honest about whatever that thing mm -hmm. is because we're going to be judged. Um, and you might be. That the reality, you might be, you're okay. dealing with other people and people got their own junk. So you can't control what someone else is going to think about your story or what you, what you went through. But if you can find deliverance, healing and freedom by telling it, then tell it. <laughs> and you know what I've learned along the way is that how I present my story Mm -hmm. is how somebody will receive my story mm -hmm. so if I present my story from a place of shame mm -hmm. then people are going to condemn me and shame. right but if I present my story in a place of freedom mm -hmm. and deliverance mm -hmm. then you you can't hold me accountable to that anymore because right. I'm free from it right right so it's all a matter of how you present your story mm -hmm. to people so if you got this woe is me attitude about it then everybody's going to treat you well with me. Right. But if you come with a, from a place of joy, like, I cannot believe <laughs> that, I, that I did that. Right. <laughs> you know? But wow, thank God. Right, right. <laughs> thank God, you know, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, just how you present your story and how you present yourself to people. Yeah, yeah. And how people experience you. Exactly, exactly. And the thing is, when you're carrying that kind of burden, it's showing up anyway. Somewhere in your life, it's showing up. So even though you think you're hiding it and you're keeping it a secret, while we may not know the detail of the story, we know you got some stuff with you that you haven't dealt with. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. So the mask isn't out. really mm -hmm. hiding anything. <laughs> yeah, you know? coming out. Yes, yes. And we all need to be free from that. We do. We all got a little bit of it. 
we mm. all do we all yeah. got a little bit of it yeah um and we gotta we have to be free from that mm. because the world deserves it right the world deserves you yes it's your best most yes. authentic self mm-hmm. <laughs> yes yeah. um so finding that safe space you know if you really feel like you don't have a person that you can be that real with if like I say this in business to clients like sometimes you you've got to pay for help so if you've got to go and hire a counselor hire a therapist to find the person who is obligated to kind of keep your secret and to hear you and let you express yourself without judgment, then do that. Do but that. don't don't hold it in because you're holding it in isn't hurting anyone but you. Yep. You're the only one suffering because of that. The people who may have participated in harming you in some way, they're going on about their business and their life. <laughs> they're not thinking about the shame that you're feeling or the guilt or the hurt that you're still experiencing. You're just you know, you're preventing yourself from living the life that you were created to live and to, you know, have the things that being your authentic self will bring into your life. Because I think, um, you know, I fully believe that, you know, where your purpose is, is where your prosperity is as well. But I think Mm -hmm. you can't be fully in your purpose if you're not fully in yourself. You You know? Right. And then we wonder why things are so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. why why are we living like why are things so hard? Right. Because you're not you're not living in your purpose. And then you have made a good point um about getting counsel Mm -hmm. and going to get help. And if you have to pay for that help, go get that help. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a advocate for that. Right. Go to counseling. Right. It's okay because that person is obligated, like you said, to keep your secrets. Mm-hmm. You do not want to be emotionally constipated. Right. <laughs> this is going to leak out. It's going to leak out. It's going to leak out somewhere. <laughs> it's going to leak it's out. It's nasty when it does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I hope people hear that. Mm-hmm. I really do. I hope mm-hmm. people hear that. Like whoever is struggling or, um, just not knowing. I hope they hear it. Right. And that they make a call. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So um, as we bring the call, this interview to a close, um, I do want to remind our viewers, loveletterstomygirls.com. That's where you can go to learn more about the project, sign up to be on our newsletter um, so you can stay up to date with what we're doing and how you can support us. Um, and to just be ready when this book comes out, I need y'all to be ready to buy multiple copies. So don't just buy your copy for yourself. I need you to buy copies to give to your girls, Mm -hmm. to your daughters, to your girlfriends, you guys, your moms, your aunts. I need you to make sure this book gets into the hands, um, of all the black women and girls within your reach, because this book is going to be so powerful in this movement is going to be so impactful around the world. So um, Ms. Cam- Mrs. Kamala Smith has joined us this evening to share with us about um, who she is and the work that she's doing in the world, um, the letter that she's writing to our girls about you know, being themselves and being their authentic selves and sharing with us about this whole wonderful concept of unapologetically unashamed um so if you're catching the replay watch it watch it through (laughs) so you can get the jewels that were dropped this evening um so Kamala I want you to share with our viewers um just some motivating or encouraging words and you know I can tell there's there's some some men and some women watching (laughs) um so just share some words of encouragement with them sure Sheree, can I say, um, I want to say one thing. Mm-hmm. So when I, when I jumped on to be a part of this, I, I knew it was going to be impactful, mm-hmm. 
but it's going to be impactful. Mm. Like it really is. It, I don't know why we tend to think small, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But this thing is about to be big, really big. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have our, where we talk about what's going on um, amongst ourselves, the, right. the authors. Mm -hmm. um, but there are women from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Not It's not small like just Delaware. Right. <laughs> this is all over the world. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine? Let's just put on our imaginative cat right. <laughs> and all of these women and young girls that are going to be touched by the words mm -hmm. of all of these women mm -hmm. that are putting pen to paper mm -hmm. to send a love letter right like that's that's moving mm -hmm. it's moving yes. um that over a hundred women have joined to be part of a movement to mm -hmm. help another another woman yes that's major. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's major. Absolutely. It's major, which means that everybody has the heart mm -hmm. to help. Right. And to get people out from their, from their point A to their point B. Mm. That, and that's good. So um, the words that I want to share is, is <laughs> just for you to remember, whoever is watching this, whoever is going to watch this, that you're forever evolving. Mm -hmm. I want you to be you, but your you is ever evolving. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same you in 2019 that it is in 2020. Mm -hmm. So just to be able to embrace that, you're going to evolve, you're going to change and people are gonna fall off when you change and people mm -hmm. are gonna step up when you change. Right. Um, but just acknowledging that and being your, we've talked about it, just being your true authentic self in an unapologetically unashamed way. Yes, yes. Be you. <laughs> be you there there there's times when I go like even now when I before I came to talk to you I told you I said I don't know why I'm nervous <laughs> do I'm just gonna be me right. <laughs> why am I nervous about being me I'm right. just me right and I have a mentor that has said to me one time I was getting ready to speak and she whispered in my ear be you mm -hmm. That every time I go up to speak against something, I still hear her mm -hmm. in my ear, mm -hmm. be you. Yeah. Because that's all I could be. Right. That's all I can be. Yes. I admire other women. Mm -hmm. And there's times where I'll be like, yo, that chick is dope. Right. <laughs> and I'm dope too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely and you're dope and other women are dope and if we yes. just start to acknowledge that we are all dope and it's enough dopeness to go around enough. yeah <laughs> every planet has some dopeness on yeah. it so yeah. <laughs> let's just let's just respect everybody's dopeness yes that's good that's good Thank thanks you. for doing this sharita <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> so i just want to close out um this interview thanking you all again for tuning in we appreciate you we love you um we're thanking you in advance for the support that you're going to give this project this mission this movement thank you camilla for joining us this evening and as i am always ending these interviews i just want to remind you of how powerful your words are your words have the power to uplift to inspire to motivate and empower so go ignite the power in your words. Peace yeah. and blessings to each of you. Good night. Good night.